Hi, welcome to the third video in my series on matrices. And in this video, what I want to do is show you how we go about matrix multiplication. It tends to be an awkward idea sometimes, but uh, I'm going to explain it by taking two matrices and saying that what they represent. Remember, a matrix is an array of numbers, and we can have any meaning associated to these numbers. And let's just suppose that we had two teams, say X and Y. And these teams won gold medals, let's call it G for gold, silver medals and bronze medals, silver and bronze. And then we've got another matrix here, we'll call it P, which tells us how many points they get for getting a gold. For getting a gold you get three points, for getting silver you get two points, and for getting bronze you get one point. So we could ask this question. Work out the total number of points for each team. So how would we go about finding how many points team X gets? Let's just put an intro here. Total for Team X, or just call it X. Then for Team X, they got two golds, one silver and four bronze. So for the two golds, they get three points each for a gold, so it'd have to be two times three. But we want the total number of points, so we've got to add to this the fact that they got one silver, which was worth two points, so it's going to be one times two. They also got four bronze medals, so each bronze medal is worth one point, so it's going to be four multiplied by one. And what this comes to is 12. 12 points then for X. So if we were working out the total for Y, let's just put that in, total for Y, what would we do for that? We would take this bottom row and combine it with this first column here. For Y, they got one gold worth three points, so it'd be one gold valued at three points. Plus, now we take the silver medals, five silvers, and times it with the two points for each silver, so it's going to be five multiplied by two. And finally, they didn't get any bronze medals, so there'll be no points there. So if I was consistent, I'd say naught times one, but that clearly is zero. Add the points up for Y, and you find you get 13. So clearly, Y got the most points. But what we are doing is essentially matrix multiplication. We represent what we've just done as this. We talk about A multiplied by P. A times P, let's just put the matrices down. We've got 2, 1, 4, 1, 5, 0. And you won't generally see any information given about these numbers written around the side. You'll just be asked to work out things like this. So we've got A, and we've got to multiply this by P. 3, 2, 1. And so when we're doing this multiplication, we just do the row with the column. And when we multiply, we just do 2 times 3, plus 1 times 2, plus 4 times 1. Exactly the same sum we just did up here. And the answer then is 12. So we did the first row, first column, and we put this number in the first row and the first column. Now we go on to do the second row, first column. So the answer will go in the second row, first column. It will go here, directly underneath the 12. And to do it, it would be 1 times 3, plus 5 times 2, plus 0 times 1. This sum here, in other words, which came to 13. So we'd have 13 in there. And there's our final answer, represented like so, 12, 13. Now suppose the system changed. Let's suppose we introduce another matrix. Let's call it Q. 
Q is a matrix which is about the first system of points, 3, 2, 1. But let's suppose we introduce another system of points. We've got the old system and we introduce a new system. Five points this time for a gold, three points for a silver and one point for a bronze. So we've got a new points matrix. We've got the old system here and we've got the new system of points, 5, 3, 1, for gold, silver and bronze. So if we were trying to work out what the total number of points were for this new system combined with the old system, then I'd have to do the matrix A times Q. So if I was doing A times Q, let's just write it here, AQ in other words, we would have the matrix 2, 1, 4, and then 1, 5, 0. And this matrix would be multiplied by Q, which is 3, 2, 1, and 5, 3, 1. So when we're multiplying these out, what do we get? Well. We do the first row with the first column. 2 times 3 plus 1 times 2 plus 4 times 1. We already did that over here in fact and we saw that we got 12. But now we could do the top row multiplied by the second column and the answer would go here in the top row second column. So we'd need to do two golds at five points each, that would be 10 points, plus one silver at three points, so that's going to be plus three. And then we had four bronze at one point, so that would be four times one is four. So we're going to have 10 plus three plus four, a total of 17. And we put that there. Top row, second column. Now we go with the 150. We do 150 times 321. Bottom row, first column. That will go in the bottom row, first column. It will go here. Then we do the bottom row multiplied by the second column, and that answer would go on the bottom row, second column, underneath the 17. You might like to pause the video and just see what answers you get for these two. And we would end up with a square matrix of dimension 2 by 2. OK, well, let's just see what these two answers are if you did pause the video. With for this one here, it would be 150 times 321. So it would be 1 times 3, which is 3, plus 5 times 2, which is 10, plus 0 times 1, which is 0. A total of 13. Well, we had that over here, so it shouldn't really become much of a surprise. But what about this element here? This one's going to be 150 multiplied by 531. 1 times 5 is 5, plus 5 times 3 is 15, plus 0 times 1 is 0. So you've got the 5, plus the 15 is 20, plus 0 still is 20. So 20 is in that bottom place. OK, now, this is how we do then matrix multiplication. But you've got to be very careful because you can't just multiply any two matrices together. There's a simple rule that has to hold and that is the rule for dimensions. You'll notice that the dimension of this matrix is a 2 by 3 matrix. Two rows, three columns. So we just put that there, 2 by 3. And what we're doing is we're multiplying this by a matrix with dimensions three rows, one column, three by one. Now, you must have these two numbers exactly the same. Otherwise, you just can't do it. You had to do two times the three plus one times the two plus four times the one. So can you see? you need the same number of columns here as you do have rows in the second matrix. So these two numbers must agree. And the final result is the two outer numbers, a 2 by 1. You can see that you've got here two rows, one column. Two rows, one column. 
And let's just take a look at this one. Again, we've got a two by three matrix, two by three, and it's being multiplied this time by three rows, two columns, three by two. And that's fine because the two numbers here are exactly the same. The answer is the two outer numbers, a two by two, as you can see, two rows, two columns, two by two. So we have this idea then, this concept that when you multiply two matrices together, it must be such that the two numbers here are exactly the same. Now I want to go on and give you some examples to work out. Now I have this exercise then that you might like to try. I strongly encourage you to have a go because there's quite a lot of ideas involved in it. Do remember though that you can only multiply two matrices together if the dimensions are of the form n by n with an n by p matrix. These two numbers must be exactly the same. And your final answer will be an n by p matrix. So I've got four matrices here, A, B, C and D, all of different dimensions. And I want you to try and find out what A, B is, B, A is, C, A, DC, CD and BC. And each problem has been designed for a particular purpose. Okay, so do pause the video, have a go, come back when ready. Okay, well if you did have a go, let's just see how you got on. So with the first one then, let's just put part one up here. We've got to work out A times B. Is it going to be possible? Well, we have two square matrices, two by two times a two by two. So yes, we would be able to do this. So we'll just put those two matrices down, A times B. Three, one, two, four for A. And then for B, we've got four, five, minus three, and two. So to get our answer then, it's going to be a two by two matrix. So we're looking at something like this. So how do we get this first element here in the top row first column? Well, we multiply the top row with the first column. So it'll be three times four plus one times minus three. Three fours are 12 minus three, which is going to give us nine. So we'd have nine there. For this element, top row, second column. So we do top row, second column. Three times five is 15, plus one times two, which is two. 15 and two is going to be 17. So that'd be 17 in there. This element, bottom row, first column. So it'd be bottom row times the first column. Two times four is eight, plus four times minus three is minus 12. 8 minus 12 gives us minus 4. So we've got minus 4 there. And for this element, bottom row, end column. So bottom row, end column. So it'd be 2 times 5 is 10, plus 4 times 2 is 8, a total of 18. So 18 in there. Okay? Now, for part 2, I picked this one because we've just worked out A times B. So I thought it'd be a good idea to reverse it, see what we get. Do we get exactly the same answer or not? Well, B is the matrix four, five, minus three, two. And we're multiplying that then with the matrix A, three, one, two, four. So we just put those in. And so in the usual way, Again, it's going to be a two by two matrix, the final answer. So for the top row here, you'll be doing four times three plus five times two. And that comes to 22. Then the element here, top row, end column, four times one plus five times four. So we end up with 24. For this one here, Bottom row, first column, it'd be minus three, two times three, two. 
minus 3 times 3 is minus 9, plus 2 times 2 is 4, total of minus 5. And the final element here, bottom row, end column, will be minus 3 times 1, which is minus 3, plus 2 times 4, which is 8, and that gives a total of 5. So you can see that a times b isn't exactly the same as b times a, different answers. So what we've got to note here is do try and remember that multiplying two matrices together isn't what we call commutative. You don't get the same answer necessarily. Let's just now look at the next example, example 3. So what have we got for this one? c times a. C times A. Well, the matrix C is the matrix 1, 3, and we've got to multiply it with the matrix A, 3, 1, 2, 4. Now, the first thing I notice with this one is that the dimensions of 1, 3 are two rows by one column. It's a 2 by 1. And we're multiplying it with the matrix that is a 2 by 2 matrix and so this can't be done because the 1 and the 2 are different values so it's not possible so we're just right here not possible okay so there's an example there on that where we have to take care for the next one part 4 we've got D times C so we take our matrix D, 2, 6, a row matrix, and multiply it by, by C, a column matrix, 1, 3. Is this possible? Well, we've got a 1 row by 2 columns, 1 by 2, being multiplied with 2 rows, 1 column, a 2 by 1 matrix. Yes, it is possible because those two values are exactly the same. And the final answer we would expect then to be a one by one matrix, just a single element. And what would that single element be? We would have to do two times one plus six times three, two plus 18, a total of 20. So a one by one matrix. Next up. 5. Part 5, we've got C times D. So C times D, we've got a column matrix, 1, 3, being multiplied by a row matrix, 2, 6. Is this one going to be possible? Again, let's just check it out. We've got a 2 by 1 being multiplied with a 1 by 2. And again, yes, it is. The two ones agree, we're going to get a 2 by 2 matrix as our answer. And what is that 2 by 2 matrix going to look like? Well, for the first element here, it's going to be top row, first column. So it's just got to be 1 times 2, which is simply 2. For the element over here, top row, second column, it'll be 1 times the 6, which is 6. And for this element, bottom row, first column, just 3 times 2, which is 6 again. And then for this element here, it'll be bottom row times n column, 3 times 6, 18. So there's our 2 by 2 matrix. Let's just put in 2 by 2 anyway, just so that that's handy to see. Now in the last one, Okay, we've just got to work out B times C. So for part 6, B times C. What's this going to be? Well, B is the square matrix 4, 5, minus 3, 2. And we're multiplying that with C, a column matrix 1, 3. So it is possible because we've got a 2 by 2 multiplying a 2 by 1. So we're going to get a 2 by 1 matrix as our final result. And that 2 by 1 matrix will have two elements like so. So for this top element, it'll be found out by doing 4, 5 times 1, 3. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 5 times 3 is 15. 15 and 4 is 19. 
And for this element down here, bottom row, first column, minus 3, 2 times 1, 3, which will be minus 3 plus 2, 3 is a 6, a total of 3. OK? So we have finally here a 2 by 1 matrix. Well, I hope that's given you an idea then how we go about matrix multiplication. And you can multiply matrices of different sizes as long as you obey this rule here. Okay?